Welcome to the Robotics Through Science Fiction Podcast. I'm Robin Murphy, and in this podcast, I'll discuss the science of how robots can be team players through the brilliant short story, Tideline. Elizabeth Baird deservedly won a 2008 Hugo for Best Short Story for Tideline. It's about a loyal Marine Corps robot named Chalcedony, the last survivor for squad. But the story isn't a story of weaponization and tactics like a Bolo's novel. Instead, it's a bittersweet story of loyalty, art, aging, managing multiple conflicting goals, mentoring, protecting, and all the other ways a robot can be a team player. It'd be a bit of a spoiler to discuss all the ways to love this story, so better to focus on the science. And science there is, as the story subtly illustrates all of the points in the classic 2004 paper by Klein Woods Bradshaw and Hoffman called 10 Challenges for Making Automation a Team Player in Joint Human Agent Activity. That paper defines what we expect of others on a team and then how that translates into what we expect from robots. To be a team, such as the team of Marines that Chalcedony was the robot member of, each member has essentially entered into an agreement or compact, perhaps unspoken, but a compact nonetheless, to work together. And more specifically, to be mutually predictable, mutually directable, and to maintain common ground. So think of a soccer team. The players can count on each other to fulfill their positions. That's mutual predictability. They can count on each other to adapt and compensate if a team player is injured. Well, that's mutual directability. And they also can count on each other to understand the game, the plays, what's going on on the field and with each other. And that's common ground. Now, Think of the programming challenges and duplicating all that teamwork we take for granted in a soccer team. And you have the heart of artificial intelligence research into human-robot interaction and why it is so hard. As Calcedony recalls her fallen comrades, it's clear that she's been and remains an excellent team player. She knew everyone's strengths and weaknesses and more touchingly knows about them as people Her common ground with them, her knowledge of culture and values, now drives her to make necklaces to serve as tangible memorials, each uniquely tailored to the person. That artistic urge is reminiscent of the AIs creating evocative Cornell boxes from the remnants of the Tessier Ashpole family in William Gibson's Count Zero. But not every human robot interaction is about being a team, and when Chalcedony encounters a boy, Belvedere, The emergent relationship isn't a team, and it it never becomes one. As noted by other reviewers, it's more of a Shel Silverstein's giving tree relationship, because no matter, her common ground includes the myths and stories of honor and combat and quest, things that do sound useful for a military robot to know about, and as a result, something more magical and special than teamwork emerges in the rather logical relationship between the robot and the boy. So would a robot ever create art to leave behind as a tribute to its teammates? Perhaps not, but if it did, it might be because a thoughtful programmer included Tideline in the common ground for robots and humans. I strongly recommend that you read the story or listen to it in the We Robots anthology edited by Alan Castor. And when you've wiped your eyes, read the Klein Woods Bradshaw Hoffman paper on team players. And think about the basic compact between Chalcedony, her fellow Marines, and humanity. And if you want to learn more about robots, uh, check out my new book, Robotics Through Science Fiction, Artificial Intelligence Explained Through Six Classic Robot Short Stories. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and YouTube channel so you won't miss a thing.